So what is the U.S. Preventative Service Task Force? Because it sounds happy. Um, and what exactly are they doing? Dr. Bernadine Healy, um, she, are you any relation to Major Healy from no. I Dream a Genie? Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no? Um, she is the uh, health editor for U.S. News and World Report. I'm glad you're here. Um, tell me about the... Tell me another reason how a panel could go from, hey, 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 you're risking your life if you don't get a mammogram, to six months later saying, eh, you don't really need them. Is there new information that I've missed? No, no, there isn't. And I think more importantly that this was in the making for quite a while because what was released on Monday were three articles in the Annals of Internal Medicine. So, you know, they knew all about this and had, so it's probably three or four months that this has been in development. So I don't understand what they said six months ago, except that this particular group has a record for flip-flopping and creating whiplash for everybody who listens to okay, them. Okay, who's on this group? What, what, what is this group? Who picks this group? Is this a political group or... No, this is a government group. Uh, it is That's even uh, worse. they appoint. It is a government group, U.S. Yeah. Health Prevents Task Force, but it is it exists within HHS in a particular uh, subsidiary of it. It is operated by HHS. I mean, all the you know all the meetings are all organized there. Uh, but more importantly, the government appoints them. The administration appoints them. Mm. Uh, many of these people are people who were, were, were chosen uh, during the previous administration. But even more importantly, this particular group focuses on public health and economics and modeling and health policy. This is very different from groups like the, you know, the gynecologist and the cancer society and the, sure. uh, uh, the you know, for men, the urologist, who sit down and look specifically if, at what's right for the patient. Okay. Isn't this, this, the this particular group? Is it, isn't this the same reason why um, it, you're, you're, you got a good shot of dying in, a, you know, let's say England or Canada if you have prostate uh, cancer? Because they don't do any of the tests that we do now for men over in, in, uh, in England. Well, you're absolutely right, Glenn. In fact, you know, we're always being dinged for not having good health care. Do you know in the area of cancer, we lead the world, and that includes breast cancer and prostate cancer. Okay. And it is it in large part because we do vigorous and aggressive screening, which other countries don't do. And in fact, we started to do uh, PSA screening in men uh, about in the early 90s. Since then, the yeah. deaths from prostate cancer in this country dropped 40%. Yes, but now they're saying, oh, no, we, we shouldn't do those. Hang on just a sec. We'll be uh, back. It's coming from this, uh, this panel. Sibelius has just come out and said, hey, by the way, I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't know if they work for you. But anyway, um, she says the task force doesn't set pe federal policy, doesn't determine what services are covered by the federal government. So what is the well, point of this? <laughs> well, well, the, the, she, she is absolutely wrong in saying that this does not determine uh, the kinds of, uh, uh, of preventive services that are covered. It absolutely does. And this is why these, these mammography statements and revisions are very important in health reform, because health reform designates this U.S. Preventive Task Force as the sole source informant for what preventive services will be covered. It doesn't go to the doctor groups. It just uses this government group. And this particular government group was just one of a, of a voice of many when it came to breast cancer or any of the other cancer screenings. Suddenly, they have been elevated to be the choice of the government for setting standards. And specifically in the language, for example, the House bill says if they don't give a test, an A or a B, uh, or only A's and B's will be covered, which means C's won't be. Well, what this mammogram report did is it lowered to C coverage for women in their in their 40s and coverage for women over 75 years of age. Gee. And in the middle, I mean, it's a shocking thing. And this isn't a Democrat Republican. This no. is this is a woman we, and man and bipartisan issue. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. I appreciate it, America. I think we've moved past Democrat and Republican. They've both been they've both been lying to us for a long time. It's just getting much much worse. Back in